We're now moving into chapter two. And in chapter two, we're going to start looking at recording business transactions, and, and we're going to be using devices that are much more sophisticated and efficient than the accounting equation. Our first learning objective, or the first module, is quite short, but important. It will explain accounts and the chart of accounts and how accounts relate to the accounting equation, and we'll look at some common accounts. First of all, to determine or answer the question, what is an account? An account is nothing more than an accounting record. Um, it, as we'll see, it is going to correspond to each element of the accounting equation. So each element of the equation will contain certain accounts. So there are asset accounts, liability accounts, and equity accounts. An account is a detailed record of all of the increases, decreases, and the balance of the individual asset liability, equity, and revenue accounts of the business. And of course, what we'll look at again are increases, decreases, and the balance after each change. So an account, again, is an accounting record. It's a detailed record of all changes, increases and decreases that have occurred in our individual asset liability, revenue expenses, and stockholders' equity accounts. There'll be increase, decrease, and the balance of those individual accounts. It tells you that, again, these are smaller elements, or in a way, subgroupings under asset liabilities and stockholders' equity. Now, companies generally are going to maintain a listing of their accounts that are known as the chart of accounts. The chart of accounts are ordered in by number, and in fact, before we get there, they are ordered by number, and large companies have thousands of different accounts, and using numbers to refer to specific accounts is a lot easier than referring to the accounts by name. And here's a sample of a chart of accounts. A sample chart of accounts for our sample company, Smart Touch, would appear the way you see it on the Exhibit 2-4. We have cash, accounts receivable, notes receivable, etc. in the assets. So our assets include various subgroupings, liabilities, same thing, accounts payable, salaries payable, and so on. And stockholders' equity, again, includes dividends. And, you know, again, we keep emphasizing that dividends are not expenses. They are distributions of wealth. And then we have parts of equity that we know contribute to earnings. Your wealth changes by revenues minus expenses. So these are basically your income statement accounts. And that would be service revenue, interest revenue, rent, salaries, and utilities expense. And every company obviously has a different set of accounts depending on their type of business. Now you notice that there are gaps in the accounts. So you go from 101 to 111. That leaves room, as I'll explain in a second, that leaves room if another type of cash account is created. Maybe there's a checking account or a savings account or restricted cash. Different types of furniture and equipment. Maybe account number 161 will be an equipment account. And those accounts will be added to the chart of accounts as needed. So the accounts are grouped by type and in the numbering system a separate number for each group. So if we go back you'll see that assets are in the series of numbers the 100 series are assets, liabilities, the 200 series, equity, 300, revenues are 400, and expenses are 500. So each account has a separate numbering system, but there are groups. And of course, we mentioned that there are gaps in the numbering, and that allows the company to add more accounts to that asset group as needed. And again, the asset group or liability group or equity group, each group is numbered. So again, three hundred will be stockholders equity. 